I'm excited to be able to present the, uh, the for this annual budget hearing. Um, it, it is always a, a delight because my part of the presentation um, is the best part, in my opinion. It's not the boring numbers, no offense, Kerry, uh, but it's really talking about, you know, what, what this budget means for our students and our community and celebrating many of the great things that we have. Um, I could say, yes, you can go, Kim. And I, I could say that through this, um, you know, I think in the last couple of years, one of the things that Santa Merchants can be proud of um, is this idea of this CM pride, this hashtag CM pride um, that we have built within our school and I think within our community. Um, because through the pandemic, while many people saw the challenges or everyone saw the challenges, I think that we look toward opportunities. Um, and when we look toward opportunities through challenges, we are able to do great work. Um, and I could say that one of the things that I'm really proud of um, is, and this is a part of the um, IB you know, being a part of the International Baccalaureate is some of the strength of partnerships that we within our community. So for instance, this is a list of some of those things like students collecting supplies for the animal shelters, uh, for, you know, churches, the food pantries, assisted living facilities. These, these are all things that our kids got out into our community and did work on. Um, if you enjoyed some of the, um, the displays on Main Street, you know, like an old fashioned holiday displays in, in windows, those, those were things that, that our kids helped to do. Um, you know, we led the effort in the county um, and in the area to bring sports back at the at the school level um, in the county. You know, we worked very hard with the, with the um, county executive's office and Section 11 to make sure that sports would return. Um, and then, um, you know, once that happened, this Board of Education you know, made it a priority to say that we wanted to have bring safe sporting events back into our community. And so you feel um, and that was important. Um, cleaning up the beaches. Just last Friday, I had a student run blood drive. Um, you know, bringing, celebrating some of the great talents and, and unique talents that we probably wouldn't have seen if we ran a regular talent show, but to, to run a virtual talent show um, and kid student driven virtual talent show was fantastic. This past weekend, you know, Mr. Spiller and several other um, community residents were there working on our community garden to rebuild that and we thank them for that. Um, so bring our community in, getting out into the community, all of those things were great. Um, you know, given the pandemic, one of the, you know, with our partnerships with Suffolk County, the Suffolk County leadership and the county executive's office, we were the first in two areas to be a distribution site, a point of distribution or a pod um, to vaccinate residents in the Santa Maria zip codes, as well as students 16 years and older. Um, and so we are very proud that we were able to provide those opportunities for our kids and for our community as well. You can go to the next one. Thank you. Um, so lots of other things to be proud of in our in our sports teams. Again, an abbreviated season, but our kids were so excite, excited to be a part of it that they jumped right out. And what was neat about it too, you know, talking about those partnerships, when sports came back, because of our role in bringing sports back, um, you may have seen the Fox News feature, um, and that was about getting our you know getting sports going again. Um, and Santa Mauritius, it was great because. Who did they feature? They featured that basketball team that could have gone all the way to states the year before, um, but they had an opportunity to, to see our team and meet with our players as well as other student athletes as well. Um, so I thought that that was great. And, and this being a part of this, having to sign that athlete's pledge really brought about very responsible behaviors amongst our kids and, and really brought about the best in our kids. Um, this year, we had many teams that were represented in, in already that were represented in county championships from soccer to track and uh, all really our, our as we expect of our, our student athletes to really step up and, and do great things. Um, this year, Jordan Titus, congratulations to him, a three time state wrestling champion. That's remarkable. Um, we have um, Team Up for Unity represent, representatives. You see the picture there. There's, you, know, you see you know, Jaden there. Um, and just really wonderful that we've got our kids doing really good things. Um, we had um, all of our teams were scholar athlete teams in the winter season. So we are, a, because all our teams were, we were a 2020 Scholar of Distinction school. Uh, which I think is fantastic because our kids aren't just getting it done on the fields, they're getting it done in the classroom, which is of course most important to us. 
um, we have 15 student athletes so far this year committed to play college athletics. Outstanding work on, on the part of all of these committed students and our committed coaches and our committed teachers. In terms of the arts, um, this is our fourth year in a row where we were one of the best communities for music, ed music education. And you, you can see some of those things there. You can see some drama rehearsals, some band rehearsals, and some of our artwork. Um, we had honor, uh, honor band participants in the Nisbeta Festival. Um, we had student artwork displayed at the Heckscher Museum, um, the Long Island Best Art Exhibition. Um, very excited for you know the coming weeks for the, the theater production of Greece, a very creative way to utilize outdoor space that's perfectly appropriate to the production and get, allow our students to put on a performance. Um, so that's going to be fantastic. Um, our music department very creatively was able to put on a virtual holiday concert um, by blending various um, you know performances uh, and creating something that we can be proud of. So some, some real nice stuff happening in the arts. As far as technology enhancements, we, are, we had no choice but to kind of flip that switch and really you know, put the gas, you know, put the pedal down to the floor in terms of moving, to, moving forward on technology. Um, and we needed to do that in order to leverage that technology so that our students would be able to learn through a pandemic. Um, we found multiple revenue sources from use of reserves to some donations to grant money, uh, any way we could, but we were able to realize a one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative in our middle and high schools. And we are better um, set up for technology than this district ever has before um, in, in order of the amount of devices on hand, the uh, infrastructure that we have, as well as most importantly, the preparedness of our teachers to implement technology resources that are gonna enhance instruction. Um, so, you know, that obviously we needed to include many of the online software that we, or, or uh, educational software that we employ. Um, th this live synchronous instruction began um, you know, mid-year this year where we had every classroom being live synchronous. Um, as I indicated, the bandwidth, we, we created our device policy early on until we got to that one-to-one. -one. Now we don't, we don't necessarily need that because we are um, in a great position with our technology. Um, this budget moving forward is going to have a smart board replacement plan. Um, that will enable, you know, uh, and it was interesting because I had the, um, the, the two principals for a day down in the elementary school came to me with a proposal for smart boards. I was happy to be able to say that this was included in our, in our budget. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of is the new website. You know, we, we saw it as a priority. We knew we needed to be um, not only ADA compliant, but we needed to, to make sure it was streamlined and, and working better. Um, and I think we've accomplished that. And, and so we have an, an enhanced website that I think is, um, you know, obviously sometimes it takes a little while getting used to, but from a design standpoint, much more streamlined, much more accessible, much more easy to update. Um, and I think has a better look to it, a more updated look to it. So really happy with the, the work that was done on that. Just, uh, you know, outstanding work. We're very happy with our partner Syntax um, who were able to put that together for us. At our elementary school, uh, great things are happening there. Um, you know, the, the, the focus toward, um, you know, dedicating space for, for project-based learning so kids can, you know, be inquirers and, and really use that inquiry-based approach to learning um, with our science lab for hands-on science learning and utilizing our inquiry lab for just that, for project-based learning experiences that are designed to really engage the students in very meaningful constructivist type tasks. Um, we're continuing with our foreign language at the elementary school program um, and really having great success there. The kids really enjoy it. Um, and that was featured in several presentations last year uh, to our, or a couple of presentations to our board last year. Um, clearly we understand that the pandemic has taken its toll um, and therefore this increased focus on social emotional learning um, as well as diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Um, there's lots happening in those regard, uh, regards. We, uh, you know, our, clearly the International Baccalaureate is internationally focused um, and the PYP learner profile is one that clearly supports all of these kinds of things. We have an active and robust cultural awareness committee there. Um, and they actually took the lead, our fifth grade leaders took the lead for the no place 
uh, for heat designation and so that we could bring that into our school. They are now partnering with our student leaders in the high school leadership program and they're working with them so that we can bring this into our other two buildings. Really fantastic stuff happening across our buildings to connect them. Um, we are moving toward more restorative practices as, oppo as opposed to, you know, draconian disciplinary, you know, disciplinary practices, more restorative practices so students can understand um, if they make a mistake, if they, you know, how they learn from their mistake um, and, and make a right out of, out of that wrong. Um, and clearly a focus on mindfulness so that, um, you know, this students can understand what those feelings are that they're having um, and how their actions impact others and how others impact other others actions impact them. Um, so really a focus on being able to um, self manage and self regulate um, is a priority in mindfulness instruction. Um, as far as the curriculum goes for um, the reading, the, the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project, we are continuing that partnership. We get tremendous professional development out of that. Um, and we are working toward, um, you know, our students and, and you know, uh, Mr. Ritchie has um, started looking at the, the reading continuums and, and ways that we can utilize our reading continuum so that our students and our parents better understand that reading process so that they can be supported. Um, so more work is being done there and that's to come. Obviously um, in that science lab and in our classes in general, partnering with Eastern Suffolk BOCES for their um, science kits um, allows us to do those, those hands-on lessons I talked about earlier, um, as well as um, a, you know, a focus on STEAM-based activities in, in these project baseline. Um, but Next year, we are looking toward um, a new benchmark assessment. That's the STAR assessment. And that STAR assessment is important because the data we get out of that not only helps us to assess where children are, it helps us to set targets for them um, in ELA and mathematics for the coming year so that they, they have something to strive for, some goals to, to shoot for. Um, and teachers know where we want those kids to land by the end of the year. As well, that information, that data can be uploaded and can be curated uh, or excuse me, can be uploaded so that it, we can curate apps that can target and per, more personalized learning. Um, so things like eSpark can take that data and tailor some of those when, when students are in centers to, uh, to provide activities for them that are most appropriate for the students. Um, <clears throat> increased utilization of technology, and that's the increased utilization of technology um, to support these individualized, individualized learning paths for students. At the middle school, um, we have uh, clearly our, our focus um, in is some of the ideas I talked about earlier in those community connections were right out of the MYP community project um, and fostering student agency and learning through service. So getting out into our community and doing those service learning projects, lots of great things happening. And you can see some photos of some of these learning service learning projects that, that took place in our communities, um, in our community. Um, the technology initiative, the one-to-one -one Chromebook rollout, students are excited about that, teachers are excited about that, we're all excited about what that means to support learning. Um, and then, you know, as far as the social emotional support for kids, um, you know, I, I always talk about how I, I see it as a father, I see it as a superintendent, um, and, and I see it um, I, everywhere, the impact that, that this pandemic um, and social media decrease in in-person social interactions has had on kids. So it's important that we are doing these things and supporting kids. Um, this year, we really, we, we started to pick up on some student recognition utilizing the um, IB learner profiles in the middle school and, and in the high school. Um, and those have been great. And we've been recognizing students at every board meeting. Um, so I think it's important that we can continue to do those things. Um, our family and community, uh, Family and Consumer Science uh, classes, the FACTS class, um, does a, a lot of great work. Um, we saw some of that with the food truck wars and um, some of the uh, other lessons that, that take place um, with the health and safety planning lessons and such. Really a lot of good stuff. Um, and clearly the return to sports has been wonderful for our kids in the middle school and in the high school. Um, moving over to the high school, um, we had... Um, we featured some students just recently that competed in the MathCon uh, competition. Um, and in, as part of our student recognition, um, I think last month, 
that's been wonderful. Um, we've been enjoying being able to see our CMTV uh, broadcast coming back and, and seeing what the students are up to and getting out there and interviewing each other and, and really putting together some wonderful broadcasts. Um, you know, one of the things we wanted to do was work toward more, um, uh, you know, get back to some of those inductions. So we were able to, to have honor society inductions, um, mostly virtual, but moving moving forward, looking toward bringing some of those in person. I spoke about the virtual talent show, but what I didn't mention was that that was put together. I did mention that it was put together by students, but it was from our friends and buddies group. Um, we have increasing opportunities consistently. We've, we've got um, several students that are, that are moving forward with that international Bac baccalaureate uh, DP program, but access to IB classes for many more students, as well as continuing the access to the advanced placement courses. So lots of opportunities for our kids. Um, I talked about the student of the month and the, you know, some of the exemplars of the IB learner profile that, that we've featured in recent months. And you can see one right there uh, with Emily um, on the, in the picture. <clears throat> Uh, peer leadership has done tremendous things. As I said, peer leadership was down in the elementary school um, and, and is working with those fifth graders on the no place for hate designation to bring it up to the, to the high school. Um, just doing a lot of wonderful things. Um, they took on some projects, um, certainly around, uh, you know, after the passing of Joe Rira, they, they did some things around that um, and, and lots of good things that they, they are really infusing themselves into um, things all over the school that are really positive. Um, and we also had a couple of students that were recognized as um, employees of the month in the BOCES career and tech, tech ed, ed programs. Um, so we're really proud of, of the work that they're doing there. Um, you can see the, uh, the uh, parking lot painting there that, that, uh, that, that was a, a positive, I think that was added this year as well. So I thank um, Mr. Thode and Ms. Mangonia for including that also. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm, I, you know, like I said, it, it really is when, when I reflect on these things and I think about all of those um, things that we have to be proud of and those positive community relationships, it really is exciting for me to, uh, to be able to be the superintendent and look and see all those wonderful things that are happening within our schools. Um, but at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Carrie Lachlan, who's gonna talk all of the, those other things beginning with enrollment. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, the boring stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know. <laughs> All right, we'll go into numbers. So we're gonna just kind of go through um, some basic information, then we'll get into the actual uh, budget numbers and where we stand for the budget vote. This is just showing the trend of the three-year enrollment grades K-12. Um, you can see we've had uh, pretty declining enrollment um, over the course of the three years. You do see in ninth grade, there's a slight uptick and that's due to the ninth graders from East Merchants coming into our district um, for education. So um, just kind of showing the trend, this is where we are headed. You do see that bubble year, the ninth graders are that bubble class that are going into 10th grade next year and will continue out. But after them, it, um, it does kind of level off um, to some steady enrollment, especially down in the elementary buildings. So as we started the budget this year, we had some goals um, that we put in place with the Board of Education that was to maintain all of our current programs. Um, the health and safety of our students and staff was one of our utmost priorities in the current situation we're working within, as well as reduce reliance on fund balance, maintain fiscal stability long-term, which ties into the redu reduction of reliance on fund balance. And mo most importantly is making sure the budget is affordable for all residents um, as we move into the 21-22 school year. So the actual um, budget, as we see it, as the board has adopted for vote, um, if you recall last meeting when we did adopt the budget, we had talked about the state aid and federal aid that um, came through, thankfully, um, in early April, right before we were adopting the budget. And as a result of that, they are increasing foundation aid. Foundation aid has been frozen for quite some time now. So we've been held at that 7.9 million. Um, our formula should be 12.9 million. So we were due just about $5 million from the state on that particular formula. So you can see here the different phases of how they're going to be giving that money to us. And in 21, 22, we're getting $1.3 million, which helped close our budget gap um, that we were working within as of March 30th um, and helped us actually maintain our programs that we had in place now, as well as put some other things back in the budget um, that we had taken out of for the current school year to balance it. 
Um, in addition, there's federal funding, um, which we will get into actually at the May 19th meeting. We will present um, more detail about that federal funding. Just yesterday, we received guidance on the spending plans that are required for that. So we're working through that as an administrative team to come up with the plan that we will then present to the board and the public for commentary. Um, it does have to be adopted by, by July 1st. So we are kind of on a fast, fast paced track with that one. Um, but as we're getting the information in, we're turnkeying it out and we'll make sure that everybody is fully aware Aware of how we plan to spend almost $3 million that's coming in from the federal government. So um, like I said before, the increased state aid has allowed us to maintain programs and class sizes. It, we are able to reduce the reliance on reserves and the applied fund balance. Um, and we can reinstate the program reductions that we had to implement for the 2020-2021 school year. So the proposed budget overall is $44,301,233, which is a decrease of the current school year budget of 0.47%. The tax levy is at 1.07%, which is the maximum limit that we're allowable by law. It's an increase dollar-wise of $262,000. So here's just a summary of the budget. It's a three-part component budget. This is how it's required to be presented. We have presented it in this format and detail over the past few months. Um, you can always go back to each of those presentations on the website to see the true details behind each of these, as well as the um, budget book is in each of the buildings and district office, as well as online with the line by line budget for anybody to review. So the administrative component and capital, you can see are about 10% each of the budget, the largest portion being our program budget as it should be. Um, the administrative component is our legal services, salaries and benefits of administration and support staff, curriculum and development programs, our finance um, office, our audits, as well as personnel. Capital is everything that pertains to the buildings and grounds, the salaries and benefits for all of that staff, utilities, um, everything that is related to keep the building operations going, uh, the debt of the district, as well as anything transferred to capital. Um, and what transfer to capital is, which we'll get into in another slide, is money that we're transferring over to the capital fund for particular projects. The program component is just that, the programs that we offer to all of our students. It's all of our instructional salaries and benefits. It's all of our textbook supplies, contracts for services, BOCES, um, tuition costs, transportation costs, the athletics, the music programs, the nurses, guidance counselors, all of that is part of our program component. Um, and that's everything that we do to make sure our students are educated the best that we possibly can. So on the other side to balance the budget is the revenue. Um, and again, you can see we do rely heavily on our tax levy. That is the largest portion of our revenue. Um, and then the second largest piece is our state aid. So again, as I stated, our tax levy is at 1.07, which is our maximum allowable. Um, we will be going to that maximum this year. The foundation aid increase has helped us within the state aid area. This money though, the 13 million represented there does not include the federal grant programs, that 3 million on the previous slide. That is separate and apart from the general fund budget. Um, and as I said, we will be presenting a budget for that particular spending. It is to be presented for commentary to the board and the public and adopted by July 1st. And that is not voter adopted, it is just commentary um, and board adopted. Um, tuition is a large portion of our revenue as well. Uh, we have tuition coming in for East Merchant students in the 9, nine through 12, our Native American student population, uh, there's a state contract for that, as well as our special education program. We have a great 811 program where we have various students um, from districts all over Long Island that come to attend our program um, and receive the best education they possibly can with our special education teachers. So, and then the miscellaneous category, which is the little blue slice on there that has no line because it is very minimal, um, but that's interest we're earning on our bank accounts, student fees for driver's ed, text, lost textbooks, um, some refunds we received from prior year expenses, the premium on our borrowing of cash, some billings we do for health services and our E-rate reimbursement. So as I mentioned before, transfer to capital is a line item within the budget. This year it's $100,000 and what this does, it's called a capital outlay project. It has to be spent within one year's time. So from July 1st to June 30th, we have to complete a project that is $100,000 or less. Once we do that work, we will then file um, the all the necessary paperwork to the state education department. And then we receive building aid back on that project in the following school year. Our ratio is 73%. 
So in essence, a $100,000 project in the following year will only cost $27,000 to the taxpayers. So this year, what we're putting out there is we're going to install bottle filling stations district-wide. So all the current regular water fountains are being replaced with bottle filling stations. And the estimated cost for that is about $69,000. We're also going to be looking to replace exhaust fans, um, primarily at Clayton Huey. We're gonna see how many we can do with the $30,000 we have left of the 100,000. Um, we are working with a vendor to get a quote on that from state contract so we can get our paperwork submitted to SED. As soon as we get that paperwork in, the goal is to have a permit by July 1 with the intent to try to get these projects done over the summer times. So what you'll see on the ballot when you come to vote is Proposition 1, and that is to vote for the actual budget of $44,301,233, and that it is within the um, tax levy. And it is a simple yes or no vote on that front page of the ballot. On the other side of the ballot, you'll see a vote for the member of Board of Education. This year, we have one member, um, one seat open, and it is only one candidate running. Incumbent George Maxwell will be running for the Board of Education. So just a reminder, the annual budget vote is taking place at Clayton Huey um, in the Main Street Gym. It's Tuesday, May 18th, and the polls are open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Absentee ballots can be requested by the district clerk. Uh, she is in district office, Janine Barr. Contact information is on the website in order to um, receive that application for the absentee ballot. 